Welcome back to Wildcat Insider, Mitch Fortner, the voice of the Cats, Wyatt Thompson, also Troy Coverdale's across the glass, now joined by the athletic director of K-State, that's Gene Taylor. First of all, Gene, how was your Christmas? Good. How was you guys? Uh, pretty quiet, but a nice Christmas. How about everybody? How about all you guys? Yeah, mine was good, quiet as well. Yeah, I, I was just saying a while ago, we didn't get everybody together because of a few colds, but for the most part, it was great, and... I was not in the office for two days in a row for the first time in a while. Well, that's uh, <laughs> unusual for you, but uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Sure. No, no, we had to just uh, my wife and I and uh, Jared and Casey, and we just had a really nice uh, couple of days together. Good deal. I, I, the, the common question is asked about Christmas, you know, what did you get that you really loved? Did you give a gift that you were, like, really excited to give somebody? Yeah, I, I think I enjoyed that more you know, doing those kind of things, you know, now, now sometimes when you have older children and they kind of figure out what's coming and as does your spouse, usually there's not a whole lot of surprises, but occasionally you get a chance to surprise them. But yeah, there's a couple that, uh, I got and then both of that I gave too as well. So, uh, yeah, sometimes the surprise factor isn't like it used to be when they were kids. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it works. Speaking with uh, Gene Taylor here on Wildcat Insider, uh, well, t- to just kind of jump right into it, Gene, uh, the bowl game's still a-, a week and a day away, but we're-, we're seeing all over the place now teams having to bank out of bowl games because of a, a spike of COVID-19 uh, positives. So is there a concern right now about the Texas Bowl and that game being played possibly? Well, not right now. No, obviously, uh, you know, what we're hearing from the LSU folks is they're doing everything they can to keep as many, you know, everybody's safe. They want to play the game as much as we do. Um, you know, both our our athletes and, and theirs are kind of on a little bit of break, and they'll start, you know, coming into Houston on the 29th. Um, some will come in directly from their homes. Some will come in with a team plane. I think uh, LSU's planning the same thing. So as long as they're, you know, staying healthy at home, uh, we'll test them when they get there. And, you know, hopefully everybody is, is uh, you know, free of any sort of symptoms or, or a positive test. And if they are, you know, then uh, we'll, we'll isolate them and, and try to, you know, try to continue forward. We really want to play the game. I know the athletes really want to play the game. Uh, you know, they practiced a lot before the Christmas holiday, and, you know, we're really, we're really having fun. So I think they're really looking forward to playing it. So hopefully they can all come back healthy. Gene, it's always been said that a bowl game is kind of a reward for a successful season. Um, with that said, I know you've had an opportunity to to be around the college game for a long time. How much of that bowl experience is important for the young guys? Because it, I think a, a lot of things happen at a bowl site that a lot of people don't see. They may hear about gifts and that, but there are lots and lots of activities and, and things for them to do. And it, it is a pretty special time, honestly. It really is. I, you know, I think it's a kind of a twofold deal. One, you know, it's a, a great way to send your – you know, your senior class out, those that are, are going to, you know, finish their careers here in a real positive way. Um, you know, it's, it's both a football game that you work, but there's also fun involved, whether it's, you know, some activities around the bowl game. And, you know, the folks that host the bowl are, are really excited to have whoever the teams are. In this mm-hmm. case, for us at the, at the Texas Bowl, you know, us at LSU, the, the folks that work those bowl games are really excited. So, you know, they get treated really well, and there's a lot of activities at the end of the day. It's also a great opportunity for the younger players that you know, don't get a lot of practice time. Uh, they, they use this time to, you know, get them some, you know, reps uh, that they that's much needed and some evaluation. And, you know, so, you know, you, some of these teams that have had a lot of opt-outs, I was watching the Nevada, um, Western Michigan, they had a lot. So there's a lot of guys that were getting big-time playing time. You know, for us, knock on wood, we haven't had a lot of, you know, opt opt out. So mm-hmm. Hopefully, everybody will come back healthy. But you know, it's kind of twofold, really. But uh, yeah, it is a reward, and and it's a lot of fun for the for the everybody, really. What do you think it means to not just yourself, but the athletic department to see the potential of Skylar Thompson if everything goes well, that he should be able to play in the game? Uh, it'd be great. You know, uh, obviously, he's had such a great career. You know, overall, he's had a great career, but he's uh, certainly had his ups and downs with injuries and. Um, so you want to be able to have him out there healthy and, and go out with, uh, with a great game and, you know, put himself in a position. I think Skyler is a, a smart guy. Very, well, I don't think, I know he's a very smart guy, a very talented guy that maybe has a chance to play uh, at the next level, you know, or at least make a team in some way, shape or form. So 
But, you know, the biggest thing is keep him healthy, keep him upright, and give him a chance to, you know, to play and finish his career the way the way it should be. Uh, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask, when it comes to the college football playoffs, since you're a committee member, are you going to be going to one of the games on New Year's Eve? Uh, no, we don't go to the – the committee doesn't go to the – uh, two semifinals. We go to the final. You know, it's a little different than the basketball committee. The, the basketball committee actually has to work. We don't have to work very hard. But uh, you know, the basketball committee goes to each region and they have a role. We just uh, we go to the ch- championship game and we don't really have an active role. The, the college football staff puts all those things on. So uh, so we'll be watching and closely watching the games. And again, same thing. You, you know, they've got some protocol in place that if teams can't. Uh, you know, make the game, which I hope doesn't happen because I think you have four really good teams that have a chance to, you know, to play some really good football. So I'll certainly be watching them uh, while we're in Houston and then uh, be going down to the national championship game in, in Indy uh, after after the, after our bowl game. Gene, what would you share with our audience about your experience of doing this? Because there are so few that get to do that. I'm I'm sure the uniqueness of it, there's certainly some pressure with it. Everybody's watching, but it had to be a, a, a big-time chance for you to experience something like that, I would guess. It, it was tremendous, and, you know, I'm very fortunate I get to do it two more years. Uh, you know, the people in the room are really – the one thing I tell people all the time is it's, it's a group of individuals, 13 of us, that care a great deal about college football. Mm-hmm. Some of the people in the room have played at a – at a really high level, or coached at a really high level. I, I think I've maybe mentioned to you guys before. I we sit next to the same person throughout the entire selection process. And I'm sitting next to Tyrone Willingham, who coached at Notre Dame and Stanford and Washington, and he's probably forgot more football than you know. So when he talks about a team or you know compares some teams, you know you kind of go, "Wow, okay, coach, I probably should have listened to what you're saying." But the biggest thing is they care about college football, and there's a I think there's a misperception or misconception that we go in there with our biases towards a particular conference or a team, and that's not the case. We literally go in there every week with a clean slate. We we talk about teams, um, about we're trying to find the best, ultimately the best four teams, but within that, the top 25 teams. And every week, it's you know a lot of conversation. We have a lot of data, but at the end of the day, we all want to pick the best four teams, no matter what conference they're from, no matter who. The, what the color jerseys are, and and just the, the amount of knowledge in the room to be able to sit in that room and listen to talk, it, it's really, really it an enjoyable experience. And I'm glad I get to do it two more years. Speaking with Gene Taylor, K-State Athletic Director here on Wildcat Insider, switching directions to basketball with the conference play starting on Saturday for the men's teams. Um, it was announced by the Big 12 last week that going forward, if a team has fewer than – Six scholarship players, instead of a game being ruled a forfeit for that team, it's ruled a no contest and just try to reschedule it later on. I was wondering if there's any more like further details into that. For instance, like is there a timetable of when there's the latest point a team can let the Big 12 know that they can't play? Does anything like that ex- exist now? Yeah, it's going to be similar to you know what we did last year. Um, and I think it, you know, I think it has to be – I don't I think it has to be 24 hours. Um, I, I honestly don't remember, but there does have to be a sign off by a team doctor and the AD that it's not some sort of gamesmanship that there, there are actually not a, a enough players to play the game due to COVID. Um, you know, and, if, and obviously if you've got a couple of guys out, all of a sudden you've got four guys out due to COVID and you're down to less than six, it would be kind of a combination, but um, you know, certainly you, we try to get them notified before they leave for the game. So if you know we're playing on Saturday and and we we leave usually Friday, we would need to notify them before we get on the plane, or vice versa. If we're at home expecting somebody to come, we need to notify that team before they get on a plane and make their trip, you know, in, into into Manhattan. So uh, I think that's the only caveat, and then again, it has to be signed off on. And, the reason we, you know, switched because originally it was a forfeit. We were trying to encourage teams to get vaccinated, and now with the way this, you know, new uh, variant is going through teams, we felt it was unfair um, because we so many teams are vaccinated, but yet people are still, you know, being infected. So we wanted to make sure. Now we don't have the makeup. Last year we had a kind of a dead week where we can make up some games, so it's going to be a challenge if we do have a lot of cancellations to make them up. But hopefully, you know, that's not going to be the case. 
Gene, because of that, because of the variant growing and what have you, are there plans within the athletic directors around the league to maybe even have more talks, more contact, like every couple of days or so on how things are going, or you just play that by ear? How does that work? Because that's got to be that's got to be a tough deal. Yeah, no, right now, you know, our last conversation was was before the Christmas break, and and this is that's when we decided to you know move away from being a forfeit. Um, and and come up with the uh, you know kind of the policy of you know the re- you know kind of reverting back away from that and just making it a no contest. Um, you know we still talk. Oh, we were talking every week there for a while. I don't know unless things go crazy. Uh, I imagine we'll just keep our ever. Every, I think it's every other week that we have calls um, right now. We'll see how we get through the you know the Christmas holiday and the New Year's and if we if we start off and we have most of our games being played we'll continue as as we normally do if all of a sudden we get some cancellations we may have to you know i know that they're also looking at you know how we're treating because the variant isn't as serious for these particularly vaccinated and younger healthy folks right you know we have discussed less time in isolation potentially and the ability to, to test out if you're a vaccinated player and if you have no symptoms so some of that's being talked about it within the medical group. We haven't really, so we may get back together if if that were to change. So uh, yeah, there's just a lot of things as the you know virus can you learn more about it and how they're treating you know vaccinated, you know asymptomatic folks, how they're being treated in terms of isolation and being able to test out like the NFL and the NBA are doing. We haven't changed that yet, but I think there are some conversations about that right now at the, with the medical staff. Gene, I just have one more question for you, and that is about uh, tying into what K-State men's basketball had to do with this game Wednesday. Morgan State, they're having some COVID issues, so they can't play. And then uh, the men's basketball team, they rescheduled with North Florida. With non-conference games, what is the process with that? Because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of schedules you have to look at to figure out who can play. Yeah, I mean, basically they just called and said we can't make it out. And, and so, obviously, we, we we went to work, or we, you know, the basketball coaches and the staff went to work finding, you know, potential team. Unfortunately, North Florida was available. I think they were kind of in the area uh, with some other uh, non-conference games and agreed to come up and play us. And so, you know, the game, it's a, it's a, just basically a game cancellation. We don't We don't penalize the team that can't make it because it's a COVID-related issue. And then we obviously – use that guarantee money to, to that we were going to pay Morgan State to, you know, pay North Florida and get them to come in. So it's nothing really from a penalty perspective. I'm, the, the good news is they let us know well enough in advance that we could get a team, and so that, that was helpful. All right. KSA Athletic Director Gene Taylor with us on Wildcat Insider. Gene, appreciate your time, and we'll see you down there in Houston for the bowl game. Looking forward to it, guys. Appreciate good catching up, and we'll, we'll see you in Houston.